Hello everyone and welcome back to our EDM project tutorial. I hope that you're keeping safe and well and I hope that you've managed to load up your EDM track from last week where we had a drum machine and a chord pattern going on and I've actually got two types of chords here as I created um, the extension task which included having chords in a rhythm. Now, what we're going to do today is we are going to try and record in a bass line. And you should hopefully from our lesson have understood and now written down the notes of a root note bass line that you're going to use. So a root note is the bottom note in each chord. So for example, my chords here start with a D minor chord and the root note of that is a D. Okay, now bass is super important in EDM music because it kind of drives the music forward and you can also, when you're actually in a club and that you stand next to a really loud speaker, you can even feel the bass, um, which, you know, adds to the dance atmosphere. So we're going to have a go at recording in a bass and as with the chords, the first thing that we need to do is add a track and I'm going to pick an instrument track. There we go, so let's click it to open it, but before we do, let's just rename it as baseline. And I'm going to rename it as a root baseline very quickly. So let's click instrument to open that up. There we go, and here's our bass, same as before. There we go. And I'm going to leave it at this low octave. I might even go down to an even lower octave. In fact, yes, I'm going to leave it there at really low notes. So the lower the number, the lower the notes. Now let's change our instrument up. We, Whilst a piano is a fabulous instrument, we don't really want it for this uh, bass effect. In fact, I'm going to pick synth bass right here, ready made for this purpose. And I'm going to leave mine on deep house because I had the deep house chords, but you could pick any of these different sorts of basses and you might want to play through them and see which you like the best. There we go. So if I remember my chords correctly, the pattern that I used was D minor, F major, G minor, and then back to D. So the pattern that I want to play now, the root note chords, is D, sorry, the root note bass line is going to be a D, an F, a G, and a D again. And I'm going to try and play one note per bar so that means I need to hold them down for four beats each because I'm working in 4-4. Four, four. So I'm going to leave my keyboard up in front of me, I'm going to click my metronome to make sure it's green because that's going to give me a click in when I record and then I'm going to press my record button but you might want to do a little bit of time practicing beforehand, it can be quite difficult to get yourself used to playing on um, this slightly new version of keyboard. Okay, so let's record that in and see what happens. And click that stop button to stop. Awesome. Right, I think that went pretty well. If you were finding your chords were being a bit annoying when you were trying to record it in, you can click the M button here, which will mute any other track that you don't want to hear, so you can focus on what you're doing. So I'm just going to click, double click on that and have a look at my bass line. So here it is all written in and I think that it was fairly successful. But if you look at these little bits here, you can see that the beginning of the notes in some places hasn't quite happened at the right time. So I'm going to quantize it and again, quantizing means to um, snap everything so that it fits this grid and so that it sounds really in time. So you can pick any fraction that you want, but I'm going to stick with 1 16th and I'm going to click quantize and you should see these two notes here just snap to the grid. There you go. Now I actually think that they went the wrong way and they're not going to sound very good. Let me have a look. Oh. Yeah, so the first note and the last note were in time, but the quantizers pushed these two notes the wrong direction. So what I'm going to do is highlight them again, and I'm going to go for a smaller fraction. I'm going to go for one eighth, which means semiquavers. So let's have a go at quantizing that. Oh, now it really has gone the wrong way. So I could go even smaller. Let's try a fourth. Nope. They're not going to do it for me. So instead, what I'm going to do, if this happens, don't worry because we can do it manually. I know that I want each of my notes to start on this line here, on the first beat of the bar. So I've got one, two, three, four across the top. So all I'm going to do is click that note 
and drag it to where I want it to be. Okay, and if you accidentally miss and go up a bit, don't worry, you can see the piano down the side and you can make sure it's in the right place. So let's listen to this now and it should all sound beautifully in time. Oh, I'm really pleased with that. Excellent. In fact, I'm so pleased with it that I'm going to use the volume and turn it up. Let's go back, add my chords in and have a listen to the beginning of our track. Awesome. And if I wanted to, I could keep looping this, drag it out. Oh, wrong thing. Drag this out and make it go for forever if I wanted it to. So that is how to add a bass line into your EDM track. And if you're happy with your bass line and want to leave it there, then that is absolutely fine and I'll see you next week. However, there is also an extension of adding a bass line riff. And this is a repeating thing, like a loop, but a repeating pattern, which is a bit funkier, uses some more notes and makes it a bit more exciting. So you should hopefully from our lesson have had a listen to um, some different riffs and you will have also had to go analysing a riff that I wrote. So we're going to use mostly the root note, the first note of the chord, so D in D minor, but also maybe some of the other notes. So for example, D, F and A make up a D minor chord. And I might even use some other notes from the scale. So the scale of D minor is D, E, F, G, A, B flat, C and D. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click uh, the three buttons and I'm going to click duplicate track because it means that I'll have exactly the same sound as I already had. But I don't want this root bass line, I've already got it there. So I'm just going to delete it and mute that one. Now, if I click instruments, let's open it up. There's my D, F, G and D again, okay? So I need to spend a little bit of time having a think about a riff and you can write this down on paper, you can practice it, use your ear and also use your knowledge of the notes of the scale. Oh, I quite like how that sounds. So I went D, C, D, E, F. So I've gone from a D chord to an F chord but added some extra passing notes in. Nice, so I've got two bars where I've just got the root note and then two bars where I've got some interest going on. And that makes it so that we've got two bar phrases here, two bar sentences. If you think about um, singing the tune and when you might stop in the middle, you'd, you'd stop in the middle. So you go and take a breath and do the next bit. We've got two bar phrases which is nice and regular we like that so spend some time practicing and once you're ready same as usual click the metronome and click record nice and as usual you only need to record it in once because we can just loop it so here's my bass line and you notice that I muted the previous one Let's have a little listen and see what that sounds like. There we go. Now, I think listening to that and looking at it, that that is pretty good. We've got a couple of notes that are ever so slightly out of place, but I think that it doesn't really need quantizing, but I'll do it anyway just in case. Okay, so that's now absolutely perfect, stacked in time and ready to go. And the final thing that I'm going to do is just rename that to Bass Riff so that I know that that's my funky version and you can see that there's a lot more movement in this one than there is here. So let's just have a go at dragging that out a bit. Let's drag it out twice. And the same with my chords. I quite like my... Um... Oh, what's going on there? Let's have a listen and see what's happening. Okay, fabulous. So that was pretty good. Um, I think that we might have...
might have a little bit of an issue with timing going on in here somewhere. Hmm. Don't quite know where. Interesting. Oh, hang on. There we go. That's it. This is an important life lesson, guys. Whenever you're composing with something like this, you really have to make sure that everything is snapped directly into the um, into the grids that you see behind there. So we should have a little bit of a pattern going on there. I'm not quite sure what's going on with my chords. Let's just drag them to there. Oh, they seem too long in general for the B part. How strange, I think it's my B drum kit. So instead, I've decided I don't want that anymore. Let's just click backspace to get rid of it. Let's drag out my A's instead, because they seem to work pretty well. There we go, perfect, they fit with my chords. Okay, let's go back to the start and have a listen to the final track. go so a drum machine some chords a bass riff and we also have a root bass line and some rhythm chords to play with as well now next time we're going to be adding even more to our edm track and eventually we're going to start to think about ordering and how we're going to structure this beat so the final thing to do is to save it and i'll see you next time bye now <laughs>